Today we're going to look into how you can specify a range of numbers in TypeScript, so from 1 to 100, 1 to 1000, even 5 to 10, any random combination of numbers you want. So instead of just saying that something is a number, which is quite ambiguous, you can be a bit more specific and say that this number lies between a range of integers. An example of this could be Pokemon. So back when I played, which could be showing my age, there were 151 Pokemon. So I could say the IDs of the Pokemon fall between the range 1 and 151. And if I try to create a Pokemon that has ID 152 or even reference it, it'll throw an error. It's pretty useful, so let's jump right into it. So instead of coding everything out, we're going to just put everything on the screen and break down what it means. So we have two main types here. One is the enumerate and one is the range. The enumerate type is a recursive type definition, which just means that it calls itself. Uh, I can do an example of recursion. I'll do that a little bit later in the video. It just takes two parameters. The first is a number, n, and the second is the accumulator, which is an array that keeps track of the enumerated values so far. Before I explain the recursion, I'm going to show you what this means. And enumerate just basically means counting in order. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 kind of thing in integers. And in this example we have here, we have f equals 1, t equals 6. And it means we get the range 1 to 5 because the 6 is non-inclusive. If we look at what the enumerate f is doing, it's counting from 0 to f minus 1. Since f is 1, we're just going 0 and then stopping there. And then the t, we're counting from 0 to t minus 1. So we have 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 all the way up to 5. And then finally, to get the range between the two values, we exclude everything from here in here. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we exclude the 0 to get our final range of 1 to 5. And if that didn't fully make sense, I've created a second example here. So if we had 10 to 16, which means a range of 10 to 15, because 16 is not inclusive. We once again have f equals 10. The enumerate f is giving us 0 or 1 or all the way up to 9. The enumerate t is giving us the same thing and then up to 50. So then we exclude this from the t enumerate and then we are left with 10 to 15, which is our range, 10 to 15. And I just want to say if you want to include the 6 or the 16, you can just put an or t here. So basically means all of this or t, or in this case it would be all of this or 16, which means the 16 is now inclusive. And since I prefer working with an inclusive range, I'm just going to keep it like this from now on. So let's clean up all our examples and figure out what the hell's going on in this enumerate function. And just noting that exclude is part of TypeScript, so we don't have to define that function. So I've rearranged the code a little bit so it makes sense. Once I press save, my prettier is going to format it and it's going to throw this to the line above again. But just so we can look at it, this is just a ternary condition that loops over itself. This here, accumulator length extends n, is an equality check. So it's saying, is the length equal to n? And if so, return the accumulator at this number. If not, we enumerate again recursively. So we call it again with the same n that we passed in from above except now we are bringing the entire array, spreading it out, and including the current length inside it. So down here I've created a little example. So if we were to start the first step, then the accumulator is the empty array as we have here. And as soon as we go to zero, we add in the zero to the array. So here we're passing in like that. And then we go to the next step and it says, is the length equal to n? which in this case it is, so 1 equals 1, and then we stop. So then we return this. And just to drill it into our heads, we're going to look at the 6 one as well. So we start with the empty array as we did before. We pass in 6 here, so then we go through, we say, does the length equal 6? No. So then we go through again, loop through. And then on the next step, we'll pass in the whole array before, which will be this. And then we're adding in 1. And then once again, we pass in the whole array, which will be this. And then we pass in the 2, and so on, until we get to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we get here, and it says, does the length of the array equal 6? Yes, OK, stop. 
And if you were paying attention, you will have noticed that I made a little mistake here. It will actually stop on this step because one, two, three, four, five, six. This is when the length six equals six. So that's why the range previously, when it was like this, is non inclusive of the six. But since we put the or t at the end here, that's when we get the or six. In case you didn't understand how recursion works, I'm going to show you what it is. And it's basically a function that calls itself until a certain point. If you don't add the until a certain point part, it'll just call itself infinitely and you'll end up with stack overflow in JavaScript, which is when the stack, long story short, your code crashes. So if we look at this example here, this is the factorial recursive and this is the while loop. So we can do it both with a while loop or with a recursive function. And a factorial number is basically this, if you didn't know. So it's written as five exclamation mark, and it basically means five times four times three times three times one. So instead of manually writing all of that out, we can just say five factorial. And I think the easier one to start with will be the while loop. We have a result, which we will be returning, and we have the current. So while this is greater than zero, we multiply the result by the current and, and set the current to the current minus one. So this is the same as this. So in the first step of the while loop, we'll be starting with n equals 1, current equals n. So result equals 1 times 5. Then the current becomes 4 times 4 times 3 times 2. And then while the current is greater than 1, so we have times 1. But in the end, the result will equal this, which is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, with an extra 1 times there. Then we return that, and we have 5 factorial. So similarly, if we were to just recursively call the function, it would do the exact same thing. So we start with n equals 5, then we call, we do 5 times, then we call this function again, which seems a bit weird if you think about it, but it's simple once you've used this enough times. So 5 times, then you call the function again with 4, and you go down here, n equals 0, no, so we're in the else part again. So 4 times, then we call the function again with 3, 3 times, call the function again with 2, all the way down to 1. And then once it's 0, we return 1. So then at that point, it'll be, we go from the bottom up. I'm going to write it all out so it makes a bit more sense. So if we start from the bottom, when n equals 0, we return 1. So hence we have a 1 here, which is this. And jump back up, n equals 1. It's kind of hard to explain through words, but hopefully this little block of code explains exactly what I'm trying to say. So we start here, and then we go down, 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 until we end up with this. And that's exactly what this function here is doing. So we just call the function itself until we get to a certain point. So this is where we return. And finally we return with this. So a very simple concept in TypeScript, just putting a range of numbers together. But as you can see, TypeScript has its limitations. I don't think you'll ever really have to think about writing this out manually. You can just copy paste this. I'll even put it in the description below. If there's any other weird TypeScript functions or types that you want me to discuss, leave a comment. As usual, like, and I'll see you in the next one.